All our lives, this well, where we get our water from, that well is has been there for for a long, long time. I remember it even before I was born. It's way down here. When you look on most maps, you won't find the name Blue Gap on there, but it's there. Many residents only speak Navajo and the nearest grocery store is like 40 minutes away and where you get little to no cell service and where you won't see a clock on the wall, but you'll see livestock and you'll even see wild horses running around. And, that's something that you won't really see anywhere else in mainstream America. This is a um, community well for the livestock, for food. This is very important to our people. I feel that I gained this connection to the land more specifically to the Navajo Nation. So my upbringing has everything to do with what I've decided to do with my life. Okay, Shane. Okay. Being, uh, I guess, the, the tag along to my father, who is a person who speaks up for the environmental justice and social justice movements from where I'm from. I was brought to the awareness of the impacts that industry has had on the Navajo landscape itself, but also the Navajo people. Our water system has been changed and that's in relation to the extraction of coal, uranium, natural gas. And so with this destruction of the balance of people and the environment, I find that my passion lies in understanding and feeling how I can help in restoring that balance. The way that I feel that I can most help in this area is to be able to continue my work as a scientist interested in water and learning how we can start from where we are now to be able to bring that balance back. And I don't even know if my dad would remember now, but as a kid I remembered him saying that if you want a seat at the table, you're going to have to bring your, your credentials and you're going to have to bring your credibility. He meant that if I'm going to be able to be a real voice and an advocate for these types of issues like he is, I'm going to have to have some letters that follow my name. And those letters come in the form of college degrees. Those letters were going to define who I was as a person accepted in the Western science world. But because of my upbringing and the knowledge that I have from my some, people, some more flower, please? the Navajo people, that I would hold uh, my credibility as an indigenous woman. I mean, a lot of um, other people, they don't really know about us. But this time, I think a lot of people will they said, there's a Navajo tribe out there someplace. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think they were pretty savvy in the way that right. they, they raised us to help me collaborate in becoming an indigenous woman scientist. I believe if you don't get that community interaction for the research you're working on, then you're really missing out on a great opportunity to see how the research you're doing and all the studying you're doing is going to really influence the lives of others. And so going back to Blue Gap really means a lot for me. Good. I'm glad. I'm so proud of it. I can't stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, 
Stop it! Stop! Hey, you! <laughs> and I hadn't been back home to that. A home I was raised in for a really long time. And when I went back and I seen this little house that I was, that I was raised in, and went to go haul water with my auntie and her kids, it just brought back so many memories and really a sense of accomplishment. Like, how did this little res kid get into a Research One institution for a Pac-12 school? How did somebody like me, as a scientist, get that far? And it was all because of the teachings that I got early on. You know, it went back to believing in yourself, developing your voice, and also acknowledging the responsibility that you have. And coming from a reservation or coming from a border town, you're going to have different stereotypes that are going to be put on you. They're going to tell you that you're not good enough to be in these institutions. They're going to tell you that you're coming from an area of poverty. You're coming from an area that is contaminated with the natural resources. You're coming from an area that suffers from high drug abuse and alcoholism. And they're going to tell you that you're not worth the struggle but we come from a people that is strong. We come from a history that is strong. Along this whole electromagnetic spectrum. I'm here today to be a living proof to you that we're just as good as the next person next to us in these institutions. And now, me as an auntie, that's what I'm trying to instill in my nieces and nephews. What I hope is that I can show them with my work that anything is possible. And in this resiliency that we have, that that is just a greater benefit to us entering the, the world of Western science. And that's what I hope to bring to my loved ones. In that aspect, I think that when we begin to share our stories, that is where our diversity begins to flourish. Our diversity will sustain, will sustain us at some future time. And in having shared that, it becomes important that we write our stories. Our particular stories, our, our particular genesis, they all have its purpose. It is sacred. Everything is sacred to us. And so, me being able to have this opportunity, I'm able to fulfill that, that promise that I made to them as a young girl and saying that I'll never forget where I come from and I'll never think that I'm better than anybody, but be grounded in, in a way that they taught me and remembering that my place in the universe will always be around that area.